everyone, Pam Gregory, astrologer. I'm going to be speaking to you today about the first half of September and the new moon that we have coming up in Virgo on the 9th. Now the energy in this first half of September is going to feel quite a bit different, I think, from the from August because at the time of the full moon in Pisces, and I mentioned it in that last video, we had seven planets in retrograde motion. And I think people were feeling that quite a lot, particularly Mars retrograde over the last couple of months. Um, it, for many people, I think, has made them feel a bit, uh, a little bit stuck. It was hard to push things forward. But as I mentioned, it was a terrific time for uh, strategy, for planning, for going back over details, etc., before we can fully move forwards, which is what we're going to get into. Because on the 19th of August, Mercury moved direct. Then 27th of August, Mars moved direct after two months of retrograde motion. Also on the 6th of the month, Saturn will be moving direct as well at two degrees of Capricorn. So at that time, we will have no more personal planets moving retrograde. And that you will feel that, that change, um, particularly if you look at Mars, which um, was moving direct at 28 degrees of Capricorn. If you see where 28 degrees of Capricorn falls in your chart and the early degrees of Aquarius, just see how the pace of that area of life, that house or that area of life, changes for you over the coming weeks. Just observe that, because this is how we learn about astrology and, and our charts and our lives, because Mars is now progressing quickly through to the end of Pisces by the end of the year. And if you don't know where that falls in your chart, please check out this link above. <clears throat> Excuse me, you can download a free birth chart from my website, you can get these um, tutorial videos, and they will explain everything you need to know about what these points in your chart that I'm mentioning in each and every update, every couple of weeks, mean for you and your life. And it will give much more depth and meaning to these updates, but also it starts you on your own personal journey of self-discovery. And that's very exciting for people. You know, people have learned so much from um, these early beginnings. So I really recommend that you do that if you're interested in taking your studies further. But sticking with Mars, Mars is strong because um, although it's moving direct now, it is still what is known as out of bounds until the 24th of September. And what out of bounds means is that Mars in its orbit is traveling beyond the normal 23 degrees of declination that the planets normally move within. And so it has a slightly kind of out of control feeling when it is out of bounds. And in addition, it's square to Uranus in Taurus. Now, I've talked about this a great deal in recent videos, but it has the, um, the sense of certainly extreme climate and Earth events. That's, that's Uranus in, in Taurus. But bringing in the element of speed, uh, both Uranus and Mars actually are to do with, um, do with speed, and heat and fires. And we've seen a global heat wave, we've seen extreme drought in New South Wales, we've seen um, fires in California, Greece, many countries. So it did seem to have this strong correlation of sudden, intense um, heat and extreme climate manifestations. Now this square is going to continue until the end of September and indeed apart from a short dart back into the end of Aries uh, from November to March, Uranus will remain in Taurus until 2026. So we have a lot more to come in terms of um, seeing some big earth changes. So we must be we must be aware of those and alert to those. So Expect Mars to continue to be strong, but it, you will sense this change of momentum. Now, I just want to say just a word about retrograde planets, because we did have a lot of retrogradation through August, and people are getting very concerned about it and, and writing to me. And I just want to explain this, because I, I wrote a short post on social media about it, and I think it was helpful for people, that planets never move backwards. Planets only ever move forwards. So retrogradation is actually an optical illusion. We've all had the experience of being on a train, pulling out of a station, and the train that we are on is moving slightly faster than the train on the next track. 
And as we look out of the window, it looks like the train next to us is going backwards, but in fact it's going forwards, just a bit more slowly than we are. So that is the that is the effect, if you like, of retrogradation, that the planets appear to be going backwards with respect to the Earth, but it's actually a form of optical illusion. And yes, it does have a, a symbolic meaning in that uh, retrograde planets encourage us to turn inwards, to be more introspective, to integrate uh, their symbolism, what their symbolism is about. And in particular, Mercury retrograde can be incredibly helpful for, for going back over, for anything to do with re research, review, reevaluate, etc. And it can be very helpful to do things more thoroughly. I happen to be born with Mercury retrograde, and Mercury is the planet of communication. I've been involved in communication my entire adult life, so um, I don't think it's held me back so far. So I just want to sort of reassure people on what that is about, um, to, to clarify it a little. But anyway, we do have, as we go into these early days of September, no personal planets in, um, in retrograde motion. We also have, um, from the 9th to the 22nd of September, we have Venus in the early degrees of Scorpio coming into a T-square with Mars and Uranus. Venus is opposing Uranus, two of Taurus, and it's squaring Mars in the early degrees of Aquarius. So throughout that period, from the 9th to the 22nd, particularly if Venus, and as I say, it's in the early degrees of Scorpio, see where that falls in your chart, particularly if that's falling in your 5th house, your 7th house, you, even your 11th house of friendships, these are the relationship houses, there's a possibility, an energetic opportunity for you for an exciting new almost electrifying relationship that may come in very suddenly for you. So be aware of that. We can be more, made more alert to these opportunities. So that could be very exciting for you. Then we have the new moon on the 9th of September. We have this at 11.01 a.m. Pacific and 7.01 p.m. UK time. This is at 17 degrees of Virgo exactly. So this is a new moon, and with every month when we have a new moon, this is a very good opportunity to set a new intention for ourselves, because it's a, it's a new beginning, astrologically. So see where 17 of Virgo falls in your chart, and that will then condition the intention you set, whether it falls in your house of career, your house of um, children, etc. So set that intention and be aware at this time that we have seven planets in Earth. That is a huge emphasis of planets in Earth. We have the Sun, the Moon and Mercury in Virgo. We have Mars, Saturn, Pluto in Capricorn and we have Uranus in Taurus. So that's a huge focus on the Earth and I believe that's how it will be. We will have a very big focus on the Earth. We're becoming more and more aware of climate change, pollution, etc. And I think we will increasingly, as the symbolism of Virgo suggests, want to be a practical service to the Earth. What can we do? Can we stop buying plastic bags? Can we stop buying plastic water bottles? Can we go down to our local beach and clear up some of the plastic? And, and can we join a sustainability group? You know, there are many, many things we can do in our day-to-day -day lives to really help to clean up the earth. Remember, Virgo is the, is the sign connected with cleansing and clearing up and detoxification. So that is a big area, I think, connected to this new moon. But also think personally, you can set a new intention for the earth that you want to manifest, but you can also set a new intention for, for yourself, because this is, Virgo is very connected to health and healing. So this is also about diet, about nutrition, can you go on a detox, can you clean up your diet in some way? Um, it's very associated with that, and it's also... Um, decluttering your home. There's a sense of feng shui about it. I always think of feng shui with, with Virgo, of clearing away the rubble and things you haven't used for ages to clear the space. But also remember that Mercury is the ruler of Virgo, 
Mercury is the planet of the mind and our thinking. So it's about clearing up our thinking, purifying our thinking. And I think so often we forget about that side. We clear up our diets, we clear up our homes, but we forget about our thinking. So if you're, if you're having any negative thinking, any negative self-talk, just catch yourself, cleanse that out of your system. If I'm getting on any kind of a negative run of thinking, I'll just imagine a big red stop sign, like a traffic sign, and I'll just hit stop it, and I'll instantly turn my attention to the birds or the sky or the trees or whatever, or a, a child or a pet or anything that I know will shift my energy to a more positive state. So this idea of also applying Feng Shui principles to your thinking and your state of being, I think is very important at this new moon as well. It's a very good opportunity to do that. I think the other aspect of Virgo that I always think of is that Virgo is connected for me to the ancient wisdom keepers of the earth. It's connected to plant and herb medicine and energy medicine. It's a, a deep understanding of healing through our understanding of the earth and, and really all that we need for good health is available to us from the earth. It's that sort of sense with, with Virgo. And that is really emphasized because at this time, Chiron is at zero degrees of Aries, that's on the world axis, so throwing um, alternative and natural healing into prominence. Chiron is squared by Saturn at two degrees of Capricorn. So that's a sense of putting work into natural and alternative healing that, you know, tuning into the natural rhythms of the earth can take us a very long way simply through the act of putting bare feet on the ground. And I know I've talked about this many times before, but it has a dramatic physiological effect on your blood, your biomarkers, etc. Just check out groundology.com for that, because um, these things are free and available to us all. So Chiron has a slightly shamanic aspect, I always think, as does for me, as does Virgo, because it's connected to this wisdom connected to the earth. So think of your own purification, think of your own healing, and maybe this will prompt you to, to go and study alternative or natural or plant uh, medicine in some way. So um, that side of it is also important too. Now I've talked repeatedly through recent videos about this beautiful, magical, mystical trine that we've had for many months between Jupiter, it's now at 18 of Scorpio, and Neptune at 15 of Pisces. And this is about dreaming Neptune big, Jupiter, having bigger dreams, having bigger horizons. And Jupiter is always quite visionary and future oriented. So can we have bigger visions for ourselves? Can we have bigger dreams for what we want to manifest in our lives? And what reinforces this is Neptune at 15 of Pisces is tightly opposing the sun and the moon, this new moon at um, 17 of Virgo. So this brings in a sense of divinity, it brings in a sense of oneness, and it brings in a sense of no limits, of unlimited possibilities. And the more we can connect to that sense, the better it will be for our lives and, and the lives of the people around us. Because if we think of some of the, in fact, really all of the great leaders had some kind of vision or dream that was bigger than their current reality. And leaders that come to mind are people like Gandhi or people like Martin Luther King, who were well aware had a, a much bigger vision for the world than the current reality in which they were living. And they not only believed in that, that dream, that vision, that great famous speech from Martin Luther King, I have a dream, but they stepped into it. They lived it as if it was already happening. And they they pulled that manifestation towards them. And we've still got an awfully long way to go, I know, in our world, but they helped the world through their sense of vision. And I've talked quite a lot about how to do this in my last book, How to Co-Create Using the Secret Language of the Universe. Get that from my website um, under the book section. So this is available to all of us, particularly at this time of 
inspiration and bigger visions of unlimited possibilities. Pluto is trine to the sun and moon at this new moon, so this is a, a sense of empowerment coming in here. And what is really special as well is we have a very strong grand trine in Earth. It's, a, it's an equilateral triangle between Mercury at six degrees of Virgo, Saturn at two degrees of Capricorn, and Uranus at two degrees of Taurus. So it's a pretty tight equilateral triangle. And Earth is about manifestation. It's about grounding those dreams and visions that we have for ourselves and for a better Earth. Mercury, as we've talked, is the planet of the mind. So this is your thinking, these are your ideas. And in trying to Uranus, these are genius ideas. These are, uh, you have a lot of ingenuity. There's a lot of innovative thinking at this time because Uranus is the higher octave of Mercury. It's very often considered to be the mind of God, to connecting to our, our superconscious. It's the planet of awakening to bring in new ideas to the to the world but also both of them being trying to Saturn that is about grounding and manifesting and establishing that new thinking so it becomes real it becomes practical in the world so this is a really wonderful opportunity to not only if you like reach for the stars but also to make sure that it becomes manifest on earth and that grand trine is exact on the seventh of the month just two days before um, the new moon and I just want to, to say because something that often occurs to me that that astrology is really a, a wonderful modality for raising our consciousness and one of the many ways in which it does that is to make us aware, and I'm, I'm so aware of this every time I'm preparing a chart, that what I'm looking at, that birth chart of that particular person, is not only a map of the heavens, of the, planet, of the planet's orbits and patterns at the moment of their birth, but it's also a description of their inner psyche and potentials and experiences. So it's inner and outer at the same moment. And I always feel I'm holding sacred space at that time. And this, of course, is the whole idea of synchronicity, that um, outer experiences aren't just kind of random blows of fate, but they are connected to your resonance, your internal resonance, which is what you're beaming out to the universe to attract experiences. So I've condensed that a little bit, but I hope, I hope that's helpful. Also, just to say, I finished um, some very concentrated teaching of about 90 minutes of teaching, which is really all of the teaching from a one-day workshop. And I'm going to be putting that out on my um, product page on my website, pamgregory.com, and I'm going to be putting out a separate video for that in the next few days. It may not be tomorrow, but it'll be um, the next few days because Mars has now gone direct, so I'm walking my talk. Um, this teaching is on, it's called The Alchemy of a Relationship, and it's about romantic relationships and your interaction with a partner romantically. Um, this is a very complex area in astrology. I've tried to simplify some of the big principles in this teaching, but I have to say it is absolutely not for beginners. I don't want beginners to buy this and then start to feel really um, lost in the teaching. So I'll be saying a lot more about that in the separate video, but if you are interested in that, that's going to be some new teaching going out very soon. I have many other tutorial videos on my website under the product section. Um, 7,000 word monthly newsletter, <laughs> gets longer every month, and um, really a lot of information on my website, my two books, etc. So um, if you want to check those out, it's just pamgregory.com. And in the meantime, have a wonderful, inspiring new moon in Virgo with lots of big dreams and visions for your future. Thanks so much for listening. Bye for now.